Welcome to a new segment, Show and Tell. As you can probably imagine, I've made a few things prior to starting this channel. So this is a way for me to share some of those things with you. Today, that thing is this, my Sir Didymus puppet. I actually made a few videos on him posted on my personal channel, but they're mostly just show. So I want to do a bit more show, but also some tell, as well as just introduce him to all of you. I made him in April of 2015. He took about a month. We were going to ASIN, an anime convention in Chicago, and Lisa and some friends were planning a labyrinth group cosplay, and Lisa asked me if I could make a Sir Didymus. He's kind of an obscure character, it's not like you can just go and buy a Sir Didymus plushie or something. I barely remembered him, or Labyrinth for that matter. It was all kind of jumbled together with Dark Crystal and Gremlins probably, but I quickly became reacquainted with the film. Anyway, as usual, I didn't know what I was doing, but I decided that tackling it like a ventriloquist dummy would be a good way to go. I had some vague memories of a Jeff Dunham <laughs> video that I watched where he showed how he made his dummies, so I worked off that. I first started collecting as much reference as I could find, and there wasn't much. There were a few pictures that someone had taken of uh, Sir Didymus at a museum, and there were a couple of a uh, weird restoration that someone was doing, but for the most part I just took screen captures from the movie. I saved pretty much every shot that he was in, and then printed them all as big as I could. And then I just started studying them, really getting to know the character, thinking about all the little things that I'm going to have to do. A user on DeviantArt created a whole series of Labyrinth character text sheets, and these were an invaluable help. A lot of the design was based off of their drawings alone. Sir Didymus began life as a ball of aluminum foil. I basically just kept balling some up until I got the rough shape I needed. Well, actually, Sir Didymus began life as an eyeball. Lisa had bought a couple eyes that were the right color, so this basically determined the size of pretty much the whole puppet. And figuring out how this eye was going to work was one of the first things I prototyped. But after roughing out the shape and tin foil, I actually sprayed it with some rubber spray. I'm not really sure why, I was just using it for a bunch of stuff back then. It didn't really work, I don't know what I was expecting. From there, I covered it in resin, which it made it hard, but it still wasn't going where I needed it to go. Eventually, I started using Magic Sculpt, and that's when it really took off. I was able to get all the really delicate forms that I was going for, and the shape of it really started to come together. Now, I needed the head to basically be a hollow shell, so most of the foil was pulled out. With the head finally taking shape, it was time to put some fur on it. Now, instead of just trying to take the fur and just glue it on to my head form, which would just lose pretty much all the detail that I've sculpted in there, and let alone just being difficult to do, I decided to actually try flocking this fur onto my sculpt. Now, the back of his head actually comes off, so I can get to all the bits back there that we'll take a look at in a moment, but there's a bit of a crack here that I've been meaning to repair. So I figured I'd show you how I did the flocking. I just took my fun fur and just started cutting off pieces. And you can try and do this with a shave or two if you'd like. And that should be enough for this small repair. Now when I initially did it, I just sprayed the whole thing with spray adhesive. But here, since I'm just doing a small portion, I'm just going to paint on some Mod Podge or whatever glue you want to use. Just paint it on the area you want and just Stick it down. And gloves would be a good idea if you're doing a lot of this. Unless you want, you know, Robin Williams hands. Oh, and I'm sad. All right, and that should be good. That's how you can do your own custom flocking with any fur or really fibrous material you want. Now, onto his spine, and you guessed it, PVC, because what project of mine is complete without it? Well, yes, his spine is essentially just a piece of PVC, and this is where all of the wires and levers and everything go. So I have one here for his eyebrows, one here for his eyeball, 
and then there's a big lever in here that'll do his mouth. Now, his eye is by far the one that works the best. There's a lot of motion in that one because it's a direct lever just pivoting the eye in that socket. Now the eyebrows work pretty well too, but the movement's, I think, a bit more subtle. Now you might be noticing a bit of a new material in there, and that's this thermoplastic, which is this stuff here, Instamorph. This was really instrumental in making so much of this work. These are just tiny little pellets of plastic. You just put them in some hot water and then they melt and become very malleable and you can make it into any shape you need. And it worked great for this little camshaft here that I used to push the eyebrows up because it's rigid enough to, to move these wires but still also flexible enough where I can push this and it kind of gives and twists and it allows that animation there to happen. Now the mouth by far is kind of the worst. I mean it works well enough but it's a bit slow, the mechanics are definitely overcomplicated, and it's actually take quite a bit of force to pull down on this lever in here. And it doesn't always close, so you kind of have to push it back up. There's a big Instamorph lever down there that you pull on. There was originally just a zip tie loop, and that was murder on your finger. But basically, in his head, there's a fish line going through his tongue, connecting to his lower jaw, coming up over a pulley to then be attached with some rubber bands, which is what is pulling it closed. So not exactly an ideal setup, but it works. The rest is pretty straightforward. Most of the body is just sewn like a stuffed animal. And the feet, again, are just sculpted tin foil and then flocked with the fur. And I put little leather pads on the bottom. There's no reference for what the bottom of his feet looked like, so I just improvised. There's a wire running through everything, so he's pretty poseable. And the rest is just tiny little hand-sewn clothes and little gloves. And there's a wire in them as well, so the fingers are pretty poseable, which is good to help him hold his little staff. Now his staff is just a dowel with some sculpted parts. I originally wanted to try and use the lathe or 3D print them, but my lathe was inoperational at the time. It's still inoperational. Something I plan to rectify before winter. But it was also before I had a 3D printer and I looked into getting it 3D printed but the cost was just too much and I was running out of time so I basically just manually 3D printed it. I drew up all the different size circles in Photoshop that I would need to make that shape and then printed out a template and cut them out of foam core and then just covered that foam in Magic Skull. And then painted it gold, and I really liked the way it came out. In fact, even when I got a 3D printer, I actually 3D printed some staff parts. And they came out really good. I even made this one, which came out really nice. And it has a special feature. The top opens, and I have a little tiny camera inside his staff. It was really cool for recording like reactions when people first saw him. Good seeing you, sir. It has been ages. Where's your mount? But it worked and looked good. I don't know. I just ended up going back to this one just because I like the way it fit better. The fact that it wasn't perfect and uniform, I just kind of ended up liking the handmade look. But I still have this one if I ever want to use it. The final thing that had me stumped was this, his tail. I didn't know how to get this glorious tail shape. They don't really make fun fur this long, at least not on the shelf. There's a great company, NFT, National Fiber Technologies, where you can get really long fur. If you ever need to make like a Wookiee costume, that's where you'd want to go. But even there, nothing they had was gonna help me make this. I had a wig from Art of Wigs that I was using and I used it to do his facial hair and I was just trying to cut pieces off of it to make the tail. Once I just decided to use the whole wig, that's when it clicked. I basically just stuffed a dowel to get it to kind of the right shape and then put some actual stuffing in it and then trimmed it a bit and... There's your tail! I colored it a bit with some watered down paint and before you knew it, 
I had his tail. That was a great moment. And of course, just attaches right in the back. It's long and flowy. It just looks so good. Just use the whole wig. Just a few finishing tidbits. The hat was a little difficult. There weren't very many good pictures of it and it looked different in different photos. And I'm still not 100% sure what it actually looks like. I could tell it was obviously some sort of mushroom hat, but it looked to be more rigid and have edges. So I went with a hexagon and cut out six triangles and just kind of made two and it's a little floppy. It came out okay and you just stick the little feather in the side. The feather, which we had to special order, it's surprisingly hard to find a big yellow feather, you know, in the store at least. His armor is Kydex. It's a thermoplastic similar to Warbla, but it's way cheaper, although it's a lot thicker and a little bit harder to work with. Or so I'm told, I've never actually worked with actual Warbla before. But for my mold, I actually just used an apple. It was the perfect shape I needed, so I just heated up the plastic and formed it over an apple and Got these concave shapes for his shoulder bells and knee pads and knuckle guards. To transport him and just keep him safe while in storage, he lives in this, his little Sir Didymus coffin. It's just a big toolbox. Not big enough though. When I was in the store, I thought it was plenty big enough, but when I got home, should have measured. He doesn't quite fit in there as well as I'd hoped, but luckily his knees bend, so he goes in okay. Just pull up his knees and just sits on top. And then there's just an insert that I've made where below, special compartment for the tail. As well as pretty much everything I'd need to fix them. Hot glue, some wire, tape, extra rubber bands, batteries, batteries. We'll get to the batteries. But it's all neatly packaged in the box, so he's really easy to travel with. So his eye patch, his nose, his lips, his tongue, it's all made out of magic sculpt, and that's pretty much it. That's what it took me to make a Serdidimus. It's probably hard to judge, but he's actually pretty heavy, around four or five pounds, and he feels like double that if you're holding him for any extended period of time. The first time we took him out, Lisa just held him on her arm with this Ambrosius blanket draped over it, which I made as well, the big one on the table and this smaller one. I just designed the panels in Photoshop and then printed them on iron-on transfers and then sewed it into a bit of a quilt. Anyway, her arm was super tired from carrying him around, and so was mine the first few times I took him out. So I came up with a way to put him on my belt. This is called a B-grip. And it's a great way to mount your camera on your belt. And I really liked it at first. I mean, it holds your camera really securely on your hip, and it's a lot better than just using the strap, putting it over your neck, or even the ones that go under your arm. Just, just the idea of your multi-thousand dollar camera just kind of banging around on your chest. And it's also super fast to put it on and take it off, and you're not tied to whatever it is being wrapped around your neck. But I've actually been using this one a bit more. It's way cheaper, not as secure, but still just as fast, and still not banging around as much as it would be if it were on your chest. And the reason I switched to this one is because I ended up using this one to mount Sir Didymus. I made a custom insert using some Instamorph that fits perfectly into the B-grip. A piece of PVC pipe goes into that, and then, well, yeah, it goes in his bum. What? But it holds him on there really securely. I can even let go, use my hands for something else, take a picture, and I can walk around like this all day. Now it might look a little funny, just this creature floating at my hip, but no one's really seemed to mind. Because if he alone wasn't enough, when people hear his voice, they go nuts. That is amazing! Thank you. Did you make it? Yeah. Oh my god! Without my permission, no one. No! Yes, that is amazing. Oh my Thank god, you. in yeah. the world! You rock! Thank you. <laughs> 
in his leg, there's a little USB soundboard with a whole bunch of pre-recorded sounds ripped from the movie. I can trigger them by pressing buttons on the back of the handle, as well as one in his hand, so if people shake his hand, he'll say something to him. Of course, I could just trigger it when they shake his hand, but it's cool to have someone actually be able to press a button. For the sound, I've just been using this. It's a little Bluetooth speaker. It's a, by JBL. I just blacked out their logo just so it wouldn't stand out. I actually bought this on a recommendation from a This Does Not Compute video. This is the JBL Go. So it's a great little speaker, and I rigged it so I can mount it right on the bottom of my B-grip, and it's plenty loud enough to hear even outside with thousands of people around. I'm transmitting to it with just a little Bluetooth adapter that plugs into the USB soundboard and the whole system's worked okay, except the speaker will auto shut off if it doesn't get a signal within 10 minutes. So that can get kind of annoying. So I think I might actually switch back to a cabled system. I originally walked around with this giant speaker in this pouch that I made a custom front for with some mesh in the front so the sound can come out. And that was definitely loud but I still think this is loud enough, but switching over to a cable will just make the whole system more reliable. Plus, I can also hook up a speaker that I have in the head, which I haven't been able to use because if I connected this, there'd be an echo because of the delay going to Bluetooth. I plan on replacing his soundboard. This one can be a bit finicky at times, and they finally released a new version that's now Windows 10 compatible. This one only supports up to Windows 7, but luckily I can still get it to run on my desktop which is good because I need to re-export the sounds again. Last time I did it, I didn't increase the volume enough, so he's been a bit quiet. I'll show you that process real quick for anyone interested. It's a bit annoying because I always forget how to use the software and then of course where I've put the files. The first step is to bring Sir Didymus over to the computer. When I install the new board, I'll probably put in connectors. That way I can just detach the circuit board and I don't have to bring the entire puppet over to my system. But for now, I just use a USB extension cable and plug him in. But once he is plugged in and connected, I just need to fire up their proprietary software, this PM66 program. This program works specifically with this board. I don't know if the new board is going to have new software. Hopefully it does. As you can see, the program does have quite a dated look. It's very rudimentary, but all it's really doing is just flashing some audio onto the board's memory chip so it doesn't really need to be very flashy. But I do tend to get lost in the interface and always forget what settings I'm supposed to change, so I'm always referring to their online tutorials to make sure I have everything set right. First, I just want to do check board, and it found my board, so that's good. That means it's connected and working. The other thing I need to change is the voice output. This needs to be set to DAC. And I want the volume set to maximum. I'm not as concerned about the quality of the sound as I am just it being as loud as it possibly can be. And then trigger function, pretty sure this is what I want. I want it so if I hit the button, it'll play the first sound, but if I hit it again, it'll just skip to the next sound. That way I can just keep hitting the button and skip through a bunch of sounds to try and get to the one that I want. So this is where the terms get a little confusing and you're not completely sure what each setting actually does. But I'm pretty sure one shot retriggerable is what I usually use. And then it's just a matter of adding the sounds to the program. So I have all my sound bites here, and I've made a new version of them with the volume adjusted as loud as it can be. On channel 1, I just have the one sound bite, the without my permission, no one may cross. So I just like having that one isolated and having a dedicated button so I can always just play that one sound, and that's just worked out better instead of having to search through all the sounds to try and find that one, or, or having one of the more obscure sounds play and it being less impactful. Button 2, I've recently exported a sound clip of the worm talking. I usually wear him on my shoulder and every now and then someone asks if the worm talks, so I finally exported a clip of him saying something. I also have a little blip sound. I basically use this to prime the speaker. As I said, the speaker will automatically shut off if it doesn't get a signal about every 10 minutes. So if there's ever like a lull or I haven't made him talk in a while, I just play that blip sound and that prevents the whole system from shutting off. Because it's kind of a bummer when I go to surprise someone by making him talk and he doesn't talk. The third track just has a whole bunch of different sounds that I can cycle through. All these different sayings that I've ripped from the movie. And button four, which is the button on his hand, these are a few sounds that somewhat make sense that he would say if you were shaking his hand. So that's how I've split up the sounds. And to put the sounds on, you just click here and choose New Wave, navigate to the folder where your sounds are, select the sound, 
And there we go. For the next button, we go over to key two, add the yellow sound. And now to add the second sound, I wanna go to group two and then add that blip sound. If I added it here, it would just play the yellow sound and then continue playing the blip sound. This is basically a way to combine a whole bunch of different sounds that'll play one after another. I kept getting tripped up here. I would put all my sounds onto group one and then I'd hit the button and it would just play them all at once. So you need to use these groups to section each one off. And then we go to key three and then it's just kind of a tedious process of adding each wave one at a time to the program. But once you have all your sounds added and all your settings right, you just have to export it to the board by clicking this button here. And if everything worked the way it should, there's only one thing left to do. All right, well that is Sir Didymus. He's all upgraded and ready to go for a few days at the Renaissance Festival. Oh my god! Oh, oh, look, look at this! Look at this! Oh my god! I'm not certain what am I looking at. Did you make... You did amazing! That is fantastic. Now I just need the dog for him to ride. He's hiding. He's hiding. He's hiding. But he did a man. Yeah. He did amazing. Shake his hand. He pushed the little. I have taken an oath and I must defend it to my death. Oh my god, that's incredible. Thank you. I wish I had a camera with me right now because that is one of the most incredible things I've ever seen. Thank you. You did an amazing you job on that. Don't you? He didn't even say anything about the Didymus. Didymus? <gasps> nice work. Thank you. <laughs> Should you need that? Oh, even better. <laughs> yeah, you're gonna get mauled today, by the way. Are you kidding me? Nope. Did, did, it's a Are you kidding? He made them. You made this? Yeah. I am so impressed. I will give you a high V because we still do high fives here. We use Roman numerals. From Labyrinth. He rides in the dog. That's you. It's. Shake his hand. His eyes move and everything. We just saw Labyrinth on the big screen. Oh, and fantastic. Saginaw was amazing. Without my permission, no one May we have your permission? <laughs> That's wonderful. Thank you. Oh, I almost forgot. I got to meet the real Sir Didymus. My Sir Didymus got to meet Sir Didymus. We took a pretty random trip down to Georgia to assist with the Birds of Prey show and Georgia just happens to be where the Center for Puppetry Arts is located, which is where the real Sir Didymus from the movie was currently on display, with a whole bunch of other labyrinth items. I say was because we were informed that he was only going to be on display for a few more weeks before being put away in storage, possibly forever. So it was a really fantastic opportunity to go see the real one, and I'm so glad I got to do it. Best of all, I got to see up close and personal all the details that I couldn't see from the movie and the pictures. And honestly, I'm really pleased with my version. I got a lot right. And they looked really cool side by side. So my sincere thank you for watching. Once again, I am Nick D. Clements. If you're wondering, Nick is short for Nicholas and the D stands for Didymus. Anyway, I'm off to make something else.
without my permission, no one may cross. I smell nothing. It's all right. 